Um, I've got a sneaky feeling we've had a small technical problem because Facebook's only just gone live. So anyone that's joining us from Facebook, we are here live with Sam Stockton from Cult of the Deep and BA Games Co. Um, before we carry on much further, let's do our obligatory nod to our sponsor. Our sponsor at this moment in time is byfullbodyarmors.com. Sorry for smudging your face out there, Sam. Um, these, guys, <laughs> <laughs> these guys produce some amazing uh, cosplay suits that are actually wearable. They're electronic. Lights up. Ooh. Phenomenal. Check it out. Byfullbodyarmors.com. You can use the exclusive discount code hashtag D-O-A-L-G to get a good code, discount code. So check that out, guys. The website is very good, and they've got some really cool things that are kicking off um, at, you know, at this moment in time. I think they've got some releases for Iron Spider, as well as, of course, the Mark I, as well as any Iron Man suits they already have. It's phenomenal. So go check it out. It's really cool. Um, so we'll uh, let the, uh, the, the the brand go away now. <laughs> now we've done our ability to nod to our sponsor. Thank you very much, byfullbodyarmors.com. And we are now back with, of course, Sam. Uh, like I say, Sam, the, the, the game's been live now. We went live on the 2nd, am I right? The Kickstarter? Yeah, yeah so we went live Tuesday the 2nd. Um, wow. And it was... I never... Like, people, like... People I've talked to and have worked with on the Kickstarter, like just so you know, the first you know hour or two is kind of intense, and I'm like, it's just a Kickstarter. Like I don't understand what's happening, but yeah, it was intense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had a whole command center down here with my brother. We had multiple computers and monitors up, and we had different monitors. It was just, it was a lot of fun. But it was great. It was a good time. Well, you know, uh, it, it is good fun, and uh, let's face it, um, anyone who's out there aspiring to do Kickstarters, um, would you have a, a kind of a, a good piece of advice for them? <laughs> um, I don't know how people do this without someone helping them, like a mentor or someone who's done it before, because there are so many details that you have to cover when doing a Kickstarter. Like, we literally felt like there was like a million threads, and we're like, okay, which ones do I pull? Like this one? Okay, maybe maybe this one. And you're trying to do all these things at the same time and to figure out where all this information stuff's coming from. So in terms of thing, find someone who's done it before and ask them questions. <laughs> that would, that's what I would say. Go do that. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Oh, yes, that, that, I can imagine. Sounds, be sounds like you, you should be asked questions. Uh, I yeah, mean, I we should be asking I, I, questions considering you're fully funded already. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope that's what I can do in the future. Uh, I mean, we've been writing a blog on game design for a while, but now I can actually be like, hey, we did something. <laughs> you should yeah. uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Like, I'm happy to answer anyone. Anyway. Well, exactly. And, and that's what I was about to say. So if you're out there watching at this moment in time, you want to say hi, or you've got any questions for Sam, then obviously please do. Um, yeah, your comments will come up on screen. Um, I think we've got a probably about you know it's, it's this is just early in the stream. We've already got about three or three or four watches already, which is not a bad start to the show. Um, so uh, we will uh, happily uh, take any questions for Sam. But obviously, in the meantime, um, my uh, our, our esteemed colleagues um, from uh, the the rest of the world uh, that help out with the site is uh, Gregor and Rebecca. So Gregor, Rebecca, and Rebecca, thanks for joining us, guys. It's always nice to have you on the show. Um, We've we've already done the obligatory nod to our sponsor, so you've missed out on the cheese. <laughs> it's okay. I, I can have. I'll I'll take one guess at the sponsor. Oh, who was that? <laughs> Is it by fullbodyarmor.com? Yeah, it was. Yes, you got okay, it. That's right. cool. Another <laughs> plug. But we're done with that now. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad that. I'm glad the bit where we talk about by fullbodyarmor.com is over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great, but no. Um, so yes, yeah, so like I say, if anyone's got any questions for Sam, um, then you can spike, pipe up. But we're going to actually talk about your game now, uh, Sam. So do I understand correctly? Because uh, I've, I've, been, I've had lots of little bits of snippets of information come through to me. Um, but it's a hidden agenda dice game. Tell me more mm -hmm. about. It. So it's a hidden role, hidden agenda dice game. And what is for four to eight players. And what you're going to be doing is you're all part of this cult and you're trying to claim power of the cult, whatever that may be. 
So for example, like the high priest, well, they actually want to keep power for themselves. They want to survive, but they got to root out the corruption who's trying to get them. So like the Kabbalists and the heretics, they got to get, got to get, kill them, get rid of them. The Kabbalists are like, you know what? We want power for ourselves. I think we should be in charge. And so they're the ones that want to kill the high priest. The faithful is trying to keep the high priest alive because they like the high priest where he's at. And the heretic just wants to burn the whole place to the ground. So their job is to just kill everybody. And if they die in the process, so be it, they can still win, which is kind of an interesting thing. But yes. <laughs> oh, that's cool. No, I, I like the sound of that. I mean, I like dice games. And uh, I think quite a lot of our uh, community like hidden agenda games. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not at all, <laughs> Mr. Dan. He hates them. He can't stand the hidden agenda games. All I heard was fullbodyarmor.com. Is that what I heard? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so, no. Mr. Dan, uh, either who's also comes on the show sometimes uh, when he has the chance and uh, the uh, child, uh, you know, facilities aren't available. <laughs> he uh, he is one of his favorite hidden agenda games. Is uh, things like One Night Werewolf. Uh, and also, if you haven't, have you played uh, Battlestar Galactica, the board game? E, yes, I like that one. That's a really yeah. good one. Yeah, that one's is. paranoia to the max. I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, yeah. Yeah. everyone's a toaster. <laughs> Flush them out the oh. airlock. So, oh, and I, the, the worst part is like halfway through, you're like, wait, oh, that changed. <laughs> it's happened. Yes. Yeah. For anyone who isn't aware that uh, you know you get additional Cylons halfway through the game. It's a good game. If you haven't seen it, check it out. But we're, we're, we're talking about Cult of the Deep, so sorry about the digression there, Sam. <laughs> I know. Was, I, if we could get compared to Battlestar Galactica, I'm like, yes, we're good. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, to be, to be already... You know, are you actually fully funded now after, what, three days? Or is it... you still got a bit to go? Well, actually, we're funded, hit our first stretch goal, and we're, I think we're less than a thousand away from our second stretch goal already. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the support that's coming in is just crazy. It's, it's awesome. I'm super excited. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see Pete Williams has uh, put his comment up on screen. You can see, honestly, he loves being a toaster in Battlestar Galactic. Joy bringing the chaos I bring. So, can you bring chaos to Cult of the Deep? Oh, yes. Yes, you can. Uh, there's a few ways you can do it. Um, we have different methods by which you can do that. So number one, well, the heretic is the chaotic character. They actually have the hard part of trying to balance everything. Because if the Kabbalists get too powerful and then kill the high priest, well, then the game's over. But the heretic also has to keep the high priest and faithful down. Otherwise, they just kill the Kabbalists and he's by himself trying to deal with everything that's happening. And so the heretic's kind of a very chaotic element in that game. However, there is a variant of the game where we, uh, the high priest can become a necromancer. And what that means is when the high priest dies, the game is not over. You have to find and kill the faithful too. So we've had games where the faithful kills the high priest and everyone's like, wait, then who's the faithful? <laughs> and so everyone's trying to figure out, okay, which one of you wants to stay alive? Everyone's like, no, I don't know. I'm here. It's okay. And so... So the Necro's variant has a lot of chaos um, to it because what happens is there's a timer and the high priest is going to come back alive. So you got to try and figure out who it is before he comes back. Or otherwise, you got to do it again. Oh, okay. Now that that's really is kind of cool. I can I can kind of understand the, you know the the the, 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 the manic behind it. <laughs> Let's face it, it's Cthulhu based, isn't it? Uh, definitely inspired by it. Uh, we don't actually pull any of the Cthulhu mythos into the game. Um, I think there are certain elements of the Cthulhu mythos that are, I love the Cthulhu mythos in a lot of ways, but we don't deal with insanity. I mean, there's a lot of paranoia in the game and there's a lot of, I don't trust you. I'm going to stab <laughs> you. It, it's for the, you know, it's, it's, this is, this is okay. Just, just feel the pain of the, the dagger. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that dagger. In there's your plenty, there's plenty of that in the game, but the Cthulhu mythos is very specific um, paranoia and, and, and uh, specifically like the insanity part of it. That we didn't want to introduce and so we actually developed our own world that has a lot of those elements in it from cults and the occult and everything we're doing there but it's actually also some greek mythology in it which is why you summoned the kraken and there's there's sirens and there's all these different elements in the game so pretty exciting oh. no it really there, is, there is a giant astral rift though which you know kind of the chaos cosmos kind of thing which if you want chaos 
when you put dice on it, it's like literally pulling a slot machine. But all the dice you put on it, you then roll them, and things happen. Like, everyone take damage. Oh, wait. Uh, I gain five things I can put into a ritual? Oh, wait. And then things different. And so things can, like, snowball. But it just depends what you roll. So it's a very chaotic chaos generator. I like chaos. Who love a bit of chaos? Yes, yes. Yeah, let's face it. Malcolm in Jurassic Park like chaos. And look what happened to him. <laughs> he got another successful movie out of it. Yeah. What's <laughs> But no, that, that's brilliant. And if you haven't already checked out Cult of the Deep, you can do. Follow the link in on the screen below, um, and uh, it'll take you to Cult of the Deep. Uh, you can still back it if you want it, if they want it. Go, yes? Yeah, yeah. 26 days to go. Yeah, so you can still, you know, help him get over that, you know, 100% backing. <laughs> that's always a good thing. So go check it well, out, guys. There, there is still a stretch goal to unlock, which... Uh, I can't remember if this stuff now. It's tokens, upgraded tokens. Is that right? Yeah. So we're, I think we're less than a thousand away now. Um, I have to look at it. I've been trying to not look at it like every five minutes. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when we do it, uh, so on this stretch goal, it's um, a token and board upgrade. So in the center of the board where you put where you put the rituals, there's these dual layered boards where you put the, the tarot cards and then you put the, the different trackers. So it's dual layered. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add some UV spotting to you know kind of highlight certain um, cool things on the board. We're also UV spotting the life token, so all like the blood symbols on the tokens are going to be UV spotted, so like really nice and shiny. Um, no. And then and then we're also going to make them thicker. So instead of the standard board game thickness, we're going to just bump it up a little bit. And then mm -hmm. the acrylic tokens you can get as an add-on, or if you do the higher pledges, uh, those are going from two millimeters of acrylic to four millimeters. So everything is just going to get kind of just thicker, chunkier, and shinier. <laughs> That's never a bad thing, because let's face it, you know, I think a lot of the gamers out there have the, ooh, shiny syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's shiny, we want it. <laughs> That's why I'm on Kickstarter. I'm like, what's shiny today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My precious. <laughs> yeah. So it's all good. Yeah. So um, let's face it, whoever's out there hasn't destroyed a game because it's a bit too flimsy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Dan's well, I, first copy of Battlestar did that. <laughs> I, I, I see why the creators do the flimsy, like, or even like, you know, say like, ah, most people won't destroy it. And then there's people like me or certain other people who I'm not going to look at or point to. But then, like, <laughs> things just happen. Like, they get creases or it falls off the side of the table. And then they're like, oh, I just bang. It's like, oh, man, it doesn't look as good anymore. Or like, also, or just the accidental knocking of your beer eh, on a game stage. Oh no, that's awful when that happens. Though the though the game does smell fairly decent afterwards. This doesn't smell like cardboard anymore. It's, it's fine if you spill cider, but stale beer is not a nice smell. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all skunked. Oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. Um, <laughs> but we like big, thick. I'm a huge fan of things that are just thick for thick sake. I guess. I mean, like good. boards that are just thicker. I'm like, yes, I like this. I like just heavy components in my games. Mm. Yeah. No way I can I, take I the like box and beat box. somebody with it, you know, just in case. Not yeah. that I condone beating someone up with a board game, but that would be hilarious. You got beat oh, up. I don't, I don't condone it unless they're beating me. And then... <laughs> Self-defense is always acceptable. <laughs> yes. Because yes. I, I bought the game. It's my game. Therefore, I can... You know. <laughs> <laughs> we do not condone violence, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We know it's fun and in jet. So, so, so come join Cult of the Deep and establish some friends. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> I know I want to. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, so uh, Sam is going to be in, in, you know, joining us for the rest of the show. He'll, he'll probably, you know, have a chat to us about some of the other board games we're going to be talking about. Uh, but for the moment, we are just going to take a very quick break. And we're going to introduce you to a new feature that we have, which is called Geeky Snacks. So check out uh, this uh, video that my lovely wife, who is pregnant, by the way, which is why she sat down in the video, uh, to tell you how to make apple nachos. Evening everyone, right, welcome to the Diary of the Lincoln Geeks, first ever snack meal time. So obviously everyone knows when you're having those big marathon games, you just fancy a snack or two. So tonight we're going to do a healthy-ish with a little bit of a twist snack, and it's apple nachos. So hopefully you like it. So basically you just need your good old apple, which we'll start off with. You'll need a 
nuts depending on what type of nuts you go with it's up to you this is the beauty of this recipe you can mix it any way you wish i've gone with pistachio and pecan because they're some of my favorite nuts peanut butter again crunchy smooth whatever brand you like and that is all you need to do the apple nacho so first let's get going right you get your apple you chop the core out and then you just literally finely dice your apple so you've got your nice nacho shapes going on there be careful everyone at home knives can be sharp don't cut any fingers right so once you've diced up your apples i've used two apples in this recipe so but here's a cheat here's some i made earlier it's a proper blue peeper moment and you just lay your apples out on your tray you'll see why i've done two rows i've done a a safety one for those nut allergy people out there so we'll just keep that aside now but there you go that's all your apples chopped up that's taken me less than five minutes to chop all those it's brilliant this meal so then we're on to our nuts so like i said earlier i've got the pecan and pistachio because i just love it and you have around about 50 grams of each so there we go there's the nuts already and i'm love this toy this is my favorite thing in our household this is our handheld mixer so you just put your nuts in the mixer let me put a few in there now pop the lid on it's going to get a bit loud in a minute and so and then we'll just go on. this is why i love this toy it's one of my favorites there we go and we've all got our nuts nice and chopped you don't want to do it so it's completely nothing you just want them so they've got a nice little crunch and there we go can you see that that's as fine as you want to chop it but again like i say you can use cashews normal peanuts the world's your oyster so again that's our peanuts ready oh yeah right also i did mention we have peanut butter so again we've just used the ultimate peanut butter i love smooth so i've already got a lot of crunch so but again this is your preference if you want that bit more crunch get your crunchy and all you need is two spoon, teaspoons of peanut butter and then that goes in the microwave for 30 seconds so really nice and quick again i've cheated i've already microwaved mine so it's all ready to go and i've got my chocolate chips again i've gone with dark chocolate because i love dark chocolate you can go with any chocolate you like i find the chocolate chips are a lot easier now for the making this is how easy this is you just get your nuts sprinkle them on obviously the more apples you have the more nuts you want it's absolutely up to you how much or little you use in these recipes so that's all i've done for that let's face it i do love my chocolate so let's sprinkle some chocolate in there there we go look at that it's looking good and then you got your peanut butter there we are look at that and then you just sprinkle that all over the top i also would recommend if you wanted to keep another bowl aside of the peanut butter so if people want to dip because let's face it i'm sure there's people in there in this world that like to dip but i'm a dipper but look at that this looks great okay there we go nice straightforward snack recipe slightly healthy and a little bit of naughty there we go and this is my last sprinkle of chocolates there we go so there's your nacho apples with the peanut butter and chocolate chip and peanuts like i say we've, there's always alternatives you can mix with this so because i've got a friend who's allergic to peanuts so this for him would not do very well so why not let's just make sure the cap's off because i have just bought this shake it up a little bit with dressing so a nice bit of caramel crunchy bar i have been pre-crunching this so it's all easy to open so exact same principle again look at that so 
crunchy nuts, apples with toffee sauce. There we go. And then if you wanted to finish off, whoops, wrong bag. There's some more chocolate chips on top. There we go. And there we have it, an alternative to no peanuts. So hopefully you enjoyed that. So next month we'll bring on some more little snacks and nibbles. I'll put on the post of what's coming up then. So we're going a bit meaty next time. So I love all these recipes. I've got loads about piling up for you all. But for now, me and uh, Mr. Chris are going to enjoy these. I'm not going to lie. I'm going for the pistachio nut side and Chris is going to go for the crunchy caramel. So hope to speak to you all soon again. Take care. Bye. There you go. So if you're not hungry now, then I really don't know what else you can do. But I seriously have got the munchies. It's so bad. <laughs> I was I was hungry anyway. And now I'm just I want I want snacks. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully that we're going to be bringing you uh, some geeky snacks uh, to have during your mammoth you know gaming sessions like my wife mentioned in that clip. So like I said, she, she's heavily pregnant with you any moment. So uh, if I get a screen during the show, it means I've got to go and George is taking over. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, any day now, literally any day. <laughs> so, anyway, let's crack on with the show. So, um, uh, this is where we would normally start, you know, going around the around the table and start talking about some of the games that we've been playing. Um, I'm actually going to say, who wants to go first? Oh, that's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, let's that's like go, on. <laughs> go on then, George. You go first. You lead us off, please, my friend. So, this week, I'm, well, week, month, month, goodness, I'll say it. I wish we had the, the energy for a weekly show. <laughs> <laughs> this week, I'm going to be talking about one of my favourite old Kickstarters now, uh, Star Realms Frontiers. Sorry, I'll actually bring that further back, so it's actually in focus. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> a, lov a lovely small little bo box and a brilliant little deck building game. I say Star Realms has been around for a quite a long time now. I can't even remember how old it is, to be honest. Um, I say relaunched on Kickstarter, I think it was 2019. Again, I've lost track of time. COVID has blurred all lines of reality anymore. Um, <laughs> it's called pre-pandemic. Pre yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, I, I say I absolutely love this game. Um, it just brings it. A whole new dimension to it and with what is certainly nowadays a very useful feature in a game offers a new solo mode and additionally cooperative play uh, with the wonderful automas that it actually presents you i say automas i, I know aren't becca's favorite th thing in the world but uh, if it means you can play, play the game with uh, out, out needing to have friends around uh, i think it's all, all well and good nowadays but I, yeah, think I, don't, I don't mind a well implemented automa as long as it's I, not like super fiddly and blah, 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 then it's fine i say the ones i've played so far because there are numerous that came with with it i think there's about 12 different automa scenarios and we only got back through through about three of them because the challenge level is quite taxing um yeah they're not, they're not the easiest of things are they <laughs> no and i say i've I've really enjoyed playing with them. I think it's a great little box, which has so much replay potential. Yeah. Um, I'll say the review will be coming up. Unfortunately, it's stuck in a backlog of things at the moment because, you know, Harry Potter has got so many expansions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, that will be coming up on the, on the site soon. But I, I might, really, I really love this good. game. Yeah, if I remember correctly, it's a, it's, a, it's a deck builder, isn't it? It's a science fiction themed deck builder for yeah, anyone who's it, not familiar with it. Yeah, it's a sci fi film de themed deck builder. It's got all your classic deck builder elements, you know, your uber damage people, which in this case is the blob, uh, the <laughs> Trade Federation, who are definitely not Star Trek, Starfleet. No, not at who, all. It's who, not Starfleet. Who are your, who are your health, health healers? The Mecha Namer, who. Uh, specialise in trashing everything, and uh, the, right. 
uh, and I forget the, what the fourth faction is called, but they're like the Imperial Empire or something, and they specialize in forcing people to d discard and strip their, their hand of yeah. useful things, which say so you, you're great classic deck building elements to it. And I say, I, I love the balance of features in the game. I've, I would say, I've found so much good in the base get base box that came with Frontiers that we've still yet to open half of the expansions and additional features that came with the uh, Kickstarter exclusives, uh, mm. part of which is having commander decks and things, so having specific starting decks as opposed to a generic decks and things. And mm. I've just got so much that I look forward to breaking open this game. And it's only because I look... Uh, th there's only so much you can beat your wife before she decides she doesn't want to play a game with you anymore. That I haven't <laughs> tried Particularly it. during <laughs> lockdown, find, try and find <laughs> yeah. a game that you don't beat your wife at, you know, and not making her lose the will to play a board game with you, uh, then yeah. <laughs> I've never had that problem when I beat you. No, I know, I get beaten quite a lot by the wife, but that, you know, we're going to talk about that right now. <laughs> not just the wife. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> so, um, but no, you know, I'm not averse to a deck builder game. I, I, I like, I like this game, uh, and actually, uh, I got given it as a birthday present uh, by George because I liked it so much. So uh, it's in my, it's in my repertoire and backlog of games as well. So I you know I like it. It's, it's a good game. Why not be at, t at the top there with some of the other deck builders I've got, I've talked about and I've played, uh, and I'm going to be talking about another deck builder on my go. So we're going to go next now, <laughs> unless anyone's got any questions for, for George, uh, we might go across to Gregor and Rebecca. I've kind of got a deck builder to talk about, so we'll, we'll do that. We, yeah, we've we've accidentally then. chosen a theme, but I'm fine. It's all right. It's never about that. Oh, crap, we got to choose my game that I was going to talk about. Oh. Uh, the game that I'm talking about is Heroes of Tenefear. Uh, I hope my camera's in focus, but yeah, I can't yeah, see it. Looks it like is. It's um, this is, so, I would describe it as a dungeon crawling deck builder. Um, basically, you uh, are your you, you, there's a solo mode as well, um, but you can play with up to four players. Uh, and basically, you go through dungeons um, and progressively level up your character in order to beat various monsters. The monsters, basically, once you've beaten them, you flip the card over and they make you more powerful uh, in order to progress through the game and defeat the big bad at the end. Um, it is a kind of like a D and d type session yeah, if it's you got will the classes hasn't it like the yeah. bard it's got the i think the paladin something like that uh, there is a bard a cleric a thief and a barbarian uh, okay four it doesn't I'm have it do doesn't have fancy. the depth of a d of a d and d kind of role play session then it can do. Obviously, the story is oh, that's what I get for trying to be fancy. The story is uh, <laughs> what you make it. Um, there is also an expansion to this, which came out at the end of last year called The Second Curse, which I do not have. Uh, but I hear it's uh, available for a very reasonable price, which means I've not looked it up. Um, <laughs> the other thing that I like about this is it comes with, bring that into view, it comes with an achievement sheet so you can tick off when you've done different things so as you can see from the the board there this is sort of the, the, how the game limits itself so basically on every round you advance the uh, you advance your token along the track when you hit the skull you do the big bad there's an easy mode normal mode and a hard mode um yeah. obviously it's a lot harder when you meet the big bad a lot quicker um, but I like the achievements because it's a kind of a reason to play again, as well mm -hmm. as winning the games on different difficulties. There's winning uh, without using certain characters. Uh, missed win the game in 2020. Uh, whoops. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, win the game uh, without clearing a level one or a level five dungeon. Um, so basically the way the dungeons work are that you have, for example... Your level one dungeon would be this uh, stack of cards here. Yeah. And then you would basically just keep going through them. I don't actually think that I think I'm holding the bosses next to the level one dungeon. So this is not representative of the difficulty. But you can see on the card here. So this boss is the Dark Lord. Um, and for a two player game, you need 
11 power to beat him. For a three-player game, you need 14. For a four-player game, you need 18. Oh, um, and basically, for every dungeon in the game that you've not completed, uh, he's actually a bit stronger. Um, okay. I really like the art. the art on this as well. It's really cool. Um, mm. There's all sorts of funky monsters. And the expansion adds another 130-odd cards as well. Um, so there's loads and loads and loads of content in this. Um, it's never a bad thing, though, is it? Yeah. Um, the, the, I really like the way that it deals with levelling up because you start the uh, campaign by basically having a handful of purely basic cards, which are zero power or one power. Um, yep. that's, that is your hand, and then you have to basically complete your hand before you can... Uh, replenish it but when you get a monster so we've got just a level one monster here fairly basic goblin um oh. even uh, on a three-player game it only takes four power to uh get rid of him it looks pretty pretty fearsome there i've got to say for such a level one monster but when he's when he's done when he's dead you flip him around he becomes part of your hand so he's a basic one power card there are all oh, okay sorts... yeah, clever. i like that idea yeah there's all sorts of interesting extra things in here, but none of them I can find now because that would be convenient. Uh, that would um, be convenient. very convenient, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was just that was just like a basic power card, but they do have uh, special abilities. So, for example, here this uh, this professional looking henchman um, is he doesn't take a lot to defeat, uh, and when you use him, not only is he two power. Uh, but he also counts for an extra two power if you use him against the boss. Oh, okay. Um, but there's all sorts of different things to doing with. For example, um, you can take cards out of another player's discard pile and play them, for example. Um, that's something uh, that uh, some of those special cards allow you to do. Um, I'm just trying to reassemble my box. My apologies. Um, <laughs> and... Yeah, I really like, as you can tell, I quite like the art style. There's loads of monsters in it. Um, but it's pretty simple to play because it, the the only thing you need to get to grips with is what's in your hand um, and what you're fighting against. There's a level of luck in it because you don't know what's going to be in the dungeon. Um, you take each card as it comes. You can choose to leave a dungeon at any time. However, yeah. there are bonuses for finishing clearing a dungeon. Um, especially when it comes to the boss battle at the end. You can also tackle them in any order you want. So you don't actually have to start off with a level one dungeon. You can jump straight into a level two if you fancy your chances. Probably wouldn't advise it, but... Yeah, there is can... there is an achievement on the sheet for doing exactly that thing. Yeah, okay. So you can, you can just do it. You can do level three and then think, all right, well, my deck's really good, I'm ready for the big boss at level five or whatever, and, and sort of, you know, march like... to the beat of your own drum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit like in uh, when you're playing. Um, oh, dang, brain, brain's not working. Oh my god, it's gone from my head now. Generally, any of the forbidden been? series when you want to jump, you decide that oh, I've played a cooperative game before. I can start this at legendary difficulty and I'll win. No. Yeah, yeah. Or no, like when no. you're ready to go into talisman into the center of the board, you think, yeah, I think I've ready. I've leveled up enough. No, you're not. Command spell screws you up. <laughs> it, the thing yeah. about the thing about the thing about fighting a lower level dungeon is you'll get lower powered cards from it on average. Yeah. Um, but so, it's easier to beat. but it's easier to beat. So it, there yeah. is a level of most of the difficulty comes from the amount of turns that you get on this. Yeah. So whether you set yourself at easy, normal, or hard. The flip side of this board is the single player mode, um, and basically the uh, the number on the on here is the amount of cards. Uh, that you can add to your hand as a single player to get through it, um, which is the way that it, it accounts for the fact that it'd be insanely difficult if you're only playing as one character. Um, mm. And I'll see if I can find a, an example. Here's the cleric. Uh, Stat with the really gen. Like work. Um, and your skill for the cleric. Uh, if you're the cleric, uh, so this gets. If you're the cleric, you get this cleric skill card alongside your basic cards at the start. If yeah. you're the cleric, each other player may shuffle up to two cards of their choice from their discard pile into their deck. So you can, if someone else needs to fight a monster, um, or if you want to help someone else fight a monster, but you don't have the cards in your hand to do it, um, but someone else has the has already played cards in their discard pile that would work to absolutely smash it, they can do that. That is 
more than within their power. But there's all sorts of fun things going on here. Uh, um, the bard looks particularly fancy. I always play the bard. Yeah, oh. well, I must admit, I really I, like the I can see why. Really good. Yeah. I, I like the feathery pimp hat kind of thing that's going on. Yeah. Reminds me of Red Mage. Yeah, I'm all about uh, you know how it looks. I, I shouldn't. Um, I'm very uh, an aesthetic person, so you know when when There's a reason you, know, you fell for labyrinth. Yes, I fell for labyrinth because it looked stunning, and then the gameplay was just shocking, and I was gutted. What were River Horse thinking? Sort out your mechanics, River Horse. <laughs> I'm not on at all having a rant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say I appreciate the aesthetics because Colton deeps that way, but then I'm like, yeah. oh, maybe, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an aesthetic your game. And, and Cult of the Deep looks fantastic and, and, and visuals, and that's what draws me in. So if, if I'm looking at Kickstarters um, and, and, and games in general, if they look good and they appeal to me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it, whether, whether I've read the rules or looked at you know, the, the video intros on Kickstarter or not. Um, so, yeah, you know, and Pete uh, agrees as well. You know, his artwork looks fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I, I definitely recommend if you haven't played that one, check that one out, guys. Um, Rebecca, what have you got for us then? Well, uh, if you like aesthetics, do you like do you like cute things? Who yeah, like I, mean, cute I things? kind of like cutey things. My wife does I've too. I've got well. today. Well, she, I appeal to her. I've got Baron Park. Yes! <laughs> oh my god, that Which, looks awesome! It's one of my absolute favourite games. Um, you need to show that as again, as a, as my wife. Curiosity was big. I really like bears. Like if you if you rearrange the letters of my name, it says we like bears. So it was destined. <laughs> it does. Okay. Um, not if you, exclude, part, yeah? if you just take my first name and my last name, rearrange it. We yeah. like bears. Uh, oh, okay, so that's kind of cool. Baron Park is a game for up to four players, uh, between two and four, I think. I don't think there's a single player variant. Um, can you change the camera back? Because I was going to show. Something. Oh, okay. Apologies. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> the oh, joys of live streaming, guys. It's all good. Um, so the the aim of Baron Park, if you sort of if you've ever played Zoo Tycoon, like you want to you want to build a nice sort of zoo, except this is just for bears. Um, there's not really an economic um, aspect to it. So it's a tile placement game where you get given a small um, zoo area. And you can place one of four types of um, bear enclosure tiles. So you've got, uh, I believe these are sun bears. Okay. Uh, we've got polar bears. Okay, my oh, wife is right next to me watching this, and I know what's going to be coming up next. We've got yeah, we have pandas. And we should have koalas somewhere. Mm -hmm. Where are they? I can't find the koalas. This box could come with a better insert. Is probably yeah. yeah. The insert <laughs> is poor, but uh, I've got a nice three D printed one in here now. Oh, okay, um, cool. So yeah, each of the each of the bear tiles is worth a number of points. Um, so you stack them up at the beginning. You've got your basic tiles and you've got your advanced tiles. Um, so your basic tiles, you can. Pretty much every turn you can you can sort of take on. What are you trying to? I'm trying reach? to find koalas. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you've you've got your sort of basic tiles, and your aim is to fill up every square on your on your zoo board. Um, when you cover a particular square, you get to expand your zoo board, so you get up to four pieces of zoo uh, for you to fill out. And if you manage to completely fill out um, your your zoo area you get uh, a little bear statue token which has got victory points on it um so the earlier you do it the more victory points you get depending yeah. on how many players are in the game you can get up to 16 victory points for completing your first full square if you do it pretty late on you might get as little as two or one victory points yeah exactly okay get that. um yeah, I knew so, that yeah was the, of the, the wife wants new york zoo <laughs> it, is, it is a really fun little game so each of the different symbols that are on your park um they they give you different abilities so if you cover the green one you get to build a uh, a park river or toilet uh, which don't net you any points but they do help to fill out your board uh if you cover the workmen you get to expand your park um okay. so you get an extra park tile 
uh, I believe the white ones are um, normal improvements, like regular enclosures. Oh, they like little cement mixers. On the expanded tiles, uh, the orange ones allow you to build the advanced enclosures. So they're basically bigger. They're worth more points. Yeah. Um, but they're all they're all unique. So uh, the the special enclosures, there's only there is only one panda, for example, enclosure that is shaped like this W shape. Yeah. Oh, okay. The rest of the the standard ones are sort of more standard shape, and you can kind of plan for those. Uh, but they're a shared resource, so once they're out, they're out. Um, that's kind of that's kind of the game in a nutshell, really. The little pit icon is where your bear statue goes. So you complete the rest of, as long as you fill in the rest of the squares on this big square. The pit here is where your bear statue lives. Yeah, for your okay. extra victory points. Yeah, so when you when you fill it out, you don't cover the pit one with bear enclosures. Um, there is an expansion available for Bear and Park called Bad News Bears, which offers you a few different things. So it gives you an extra type of bear, and I can't remember what they are. Is it Gobi Bears? It's on the um, shelf. There's another one that there's another part of that expansion that allows you to build monorails, um, oh, which cool. is quite cool. Like they're actual three yeah. D monorails. They look really cool. Um, oh, okay, I think, I think he's trying to find it on your mammoth shelf of board games there. There, bad news bears. There you go. Uh, so, bad news bears. Oh no, bears. it's it's grizzly bears. You get grizzly bears. In this okay. Um, and you also get a monorail. The monorail is pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It is super cool, and it adds it adds a nice <laughs> dimension to the game because it, it it makes it three D. You've got another. Thing, you've got a thing running. Oh, it's a it's an elevated monorail, so it's running on top of your park rather. Yeah. Than... Oh, that's cool. Uh, I'm thinking of the Simpsons for... episode now. Monorail. <laughs> it's going one through my head. I've completely failed to mention is that you there are two modes of the game, so you can play a sort of standard or beginner mode, and there's an advanced mode as well, which has achievements. Um, so there's little achievement tiles. They're worth an amount of points. Um, so, for example, I'm trying to find one that I can sort of read. Uh, so, for example, this one, if you have three panda enclosures, you get eight victory points at the end. Okay. Um, cool. So you can play without those, you can play with them. Uh, I, I think it's a perfectly fine standalone game without the extra mm. achievements. Um, yeah. I can understand your if, you're with a, if you're with a group of people who played it quite a lot, you might want to do it to add to the level of competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We all um, like levels of e extra complexity, you know, let's face it. We need this game. Yeah, if, you, if you are into bears, there's a reason why we you... all back everything to the maximum level when we buy Kickstarter. Yes, yes. If I didn't like talk you that. If you like tile placement games, then I would definitely recommend checking it out. It's not too difficult um, to sort of cut to grips with. Very small rule book. Sorry, George. Um, <laughs> George, George, I have, no problem. I have no problem with small yeah, rule books. Uh, they're well written. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Well, we, you've managed to sell it to my wife. She wants it already, so uh, yeah, already. I, it's going to be added onto my shopping list. Probably list. really enjoy it. Yes. Okay. So it definitely. It it's called Baron Park. Is that right? And what was the expansion? Yes, Baron Park. So it's uh, it's a German game. So it's it's got the uh, the umlaut above the A over here. Bill Walker Harding, Baron Park. Cool. I've definitely checked that one out. And if you guys out there on the internet who hasn't seen it either and you want to check that out as well, we will be putting links to all of these on the website uh, so you can uh, easily find them and check them out. Um, so it kind of leads on to the, the last one. Okay? And I'm I was going to talk about uh, Ascension, which is a classic deck building game. Now, for anyone who isn't familiar with deck building games, we've talked to them quite a lot during the show today, but um, Ascension is one of my favorites. Um, I, I introduced it to my wife or my, my, my girlfriend at the time. It was her first introduction to, to uh, uh, deck builders or, or games in general. Uh, and uh, she got the bug and she liked it. Uh, and we have it still now. I've even got the, uh, I think it was the third year special edition box set, which came with the entire collection, all the expansions with the full cards. Yeah, she's found it already. <laughs> she's already shopping on Amazon. <laughs> uh, found Baron Park. So, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, quickly show my screen. 
so the uh, games by Stoneblade Entertainment, uh, they've actually got quite a few range of games now on the system um, uh, on their website. Um, but if I uh, click on, I'm trying to click on the screen, and I'm not actually on the browser. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it will show there's a myriad of expansions and, and the base game. Uh, got, you don't own most of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't own most of them at all. We, we haven't got the Dawn of Champions, and we don't have the Year 3 third edition expansion, uh, which wasn't that cheap at the time, so they're clearly having a sale at the moment. This isn't a promotion. <laughs> I just happened <laughs> to you know, you know, show you. Hey. The but there's lots of expansions, okay? Um, you know, it's one of these games where um, when once you've you kind of got started with something, it just keeps going. Okay, and that's not a bad thing. You know, I like deck builders, and the, and the concept behind this one is you are um, uh, almost like a general. Uh, the aim of the game is to defeat monsters and acquire heroes for your for your little army that you're putting together. There's lots of mechanics with deck builders that basically give you the opportunity to banish monsters, defeat monsters, all sorts. Um, and the aim of the game is to get um, uh, claim runes, uh, and the more runes you get. The, uh, in, which is your buy kind of purchase power. You can then obviously purchase heroes and defeat monsters, and that's what gets you honor. And you, you collect honor, and that's how you win the game. Now, what I like about Ascension is you might think, oh, someone's rolling away with the game. They have defeated lots of monsters, uh, and they've got a big stack of gems that represent, you know, you know, the, the current point value. Uh, but then you've got honor values on the cards. So while you'll get an instantaneous, you know, reward for defeating a monster. Your heroes you hire and the constructs you, you, you build, constructs are uh, cards that stay in play you know, in front of you in your, in your build area. Um, they actually have values as well. And you add everything up at the end of the game. So you add up the value of your cards that you've built and refined into your deck uh, for combat and general uh, gathering of resources. And then you add that to your gems. And it, gives, and it can change the dynamic of the game on, on a, on, you know, on itself very quickly and the more players you've got all fighting over these resources that are in your middle board uh the better and I, i've actually played this uh, i think it was six player and it took two hours but i tell you what it was actually quite hilarious because uh there'll be one minute someone was like i built my deck up to defeat monsters there's no monsters where are they all <laughs> you know it's just one of those kind of deck builder games so if you you haven't tried a deck builder um there's lots of them available we've talked quite quite a lot i mean george has talked about um um brains just not working they talk about his one earlier. Frontiers. star realms frontiers and that's like a, again another deck builder and that you know it's what you take from them at the end of the day because they've got lots of deck builders they have similar mechanics but it's the themes i mean harry potter hogwarts battle is a deck builder game but of course it's got that great harry potter theme based on it so um it depends on your theme but with with this with this ascension you've got cultists and you've got monsters you've got demons um you know and, and you've got uh well they almost look like samurai heroes i wish i'd kind of put a bit of a slide together with some of the cards because the artwork on it's great um, I mean, I'll show you. I'll show you the screen again and see if I can uh, bring up some of the cards in in the in the base expand in the base game that I had. No, they they just got product pictures. It's really annoying. I was trying to find something earlier, uh, but you can get an idea on the artwork on the box here. You know, it's great, and the cards actually look like this. Um, and and what they've just done, they you know they renounced it a little while ago. It's it's had it's had its Kickstarter and it was backed. But they've basically introduced a miniature strategy based game based on this. So you'll have your deck builder elements, but you've got the strategy and miniatures of it as well. And it looks fantastic. Uh, I'm I'm not showing it uh, uh, right now. We'll we'll probably highlight that in another show. For, for another for another time but it, it looks great um and um uh you know if you've got a bit of time go check it out but it's not available to back anymore it'll be going to retail soon um i mean um you know 
it's whatever floats your boat at the end of the day. All, all we're here at the end of the day is talking about games and some of our favorite things. And it is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite deck builders that I've got. It's, it's cats as well. And my, my wife, you know, we absolutely love it. We played it the other night for about an hour and a half. Uh, we got two rounds and she still kicks my ass. She still kicks my butt at that game. But I, we just love it. We just love it. So, uh, uh, no, do go check it out. Um, so, yeah. It's, it's, it's really good. Anyone got sorry. any questions? I know I just talk, sorry. <laughs> no, it's right. I would say I, it's not a question so much as a comment. I think transcends all the games, deck builders, what you said tonight, is that I think deck builders sometimes have a bit of a bad rep from, uh, I'll, I'll name it Magic the Gathering. Um, yeah. yeah. They, they, but that's not, I don't class as a deck builder. <laughs> I, I would say they get a bad rep because of games like that, which let's face it, are still in business because they break your bank balance because you have I to buy the Sam latest cards to win. He's shaking. He looked like he was shaking his head. Sam, come on. What were you thinking then? I could see it mulling over in your head there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just funny because you, you just say that about deck builders and magic and it's so – what's interesting about like the deck builders and stuff is it's amazing how many gamers don't – Across the genres. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We we've run into this because we're a social deduction dice game, right? And so it's it's fairly easy. It's not too complex. It has elements to it. But when we show it to some people who play Werewolf, they're like, "Man, this game is so mechanically intensive. Yeah. Like you got to roll dice and you got to you know assign them places and you get stuff." And I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like. I'm not sure about this. Like, and they, they end up loving it, but they're not sure about it at first. And then we yeah. show it to like the Magic the Gathering guys, and they're like, "Yeah, I got this. This is easy. Just you know, you got phases. Oh, perfect. Got it. Is there a stack?" And they always talk about, "Is there a stack?" <laughs> oh no, the dreaded stack. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. It's first come, first serve. And so, like, yeah. just different things. Like, oh, yeah. and so then we have like different gamers, and they all. It's amazing how like they don't go, they don't cross the the boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of times they end up in like their own little groups. It's just it's just amazing to me how that how that happens. But yeah, I, I think it's amazing how games games develop and and uh, spawn from things. Because believe it or not, Ascension was actually spawned and the brainchild of a, a Magic Pro player. Mm -hmm. You know, from the Mac, from the Pro Circuit, he came up with it and look where it is now. I mean, I've lost track of the expansions and this. I actually went doing a bit of research for the show. I was looking on there going. I want that expansion. I want that expansion. No! It's, it's <laughs> it looks. magic all over again. <laughs> but what I saw. Well, without like the expansions, you'll never be an Ascension pro player. <laughs> no, not exactly. But it, that's what I like about deck builders. Everyone has that level playing field uh, of opportunity to, to mm -hmm. hone their deck. Um, mm -hmm. you've, everyone's got the same resources. You've got a, a degree of first come, first serve, whoever's got the money to buy it or whoever's got the, the, you know, the, the military to defeat something, particularly like in Ascension. Um, but you've not got this, oh, I've got to get boosters and I've got to you know, you know, get starter decks and I've got to gather a collection just so I can make a deck to play a game and be you know, a reasonable deck and you've got to have a bit of skill about it. It gives everyone that same skill level. It's what you do with it. So well, I, had, I, had a, I, had, I had a question for you guys. Oh, go ahead, Becca. The, uh, I was just going to say, like, the thing that I find really frustrating about sort of more trading card games like Magic or particularly like the Pokemon trading card game is that I, I – so I have a, a very large collection of Pokemon cards. I can't use any of them because they're like – you know, they they are more than a year old, and the the rules are always changing. Like, if you want to play, um, if you want to play in any leagues or tournaments, you have to have all of your cards have to be from like the previous three uh, releases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mine just aren't. Like, I've got thousands of them. A lot of them are from the original issue in like the late nineties, early nineties. Yeah. Wow! Please um, tell me they're in mint condition because that's yeah. the Saturn fortune. If they are, yes, they are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, then they've been they've been played with because I used to play a lot. Uh, right. Okay, you're just sat like, on the reason like one stop. <laughs> yeah, um, they, still, have, they have been uh, indexed and sleeved now, mm. uh, but <laughs> yeah, a lot after the horse had bolted on that one a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There are okay. some that aren't in, some that aren't in great condition, but yeah, it's just really frustrating when you you know 
I want to play Pokemon trading card game, I can't unless I keep up to date with it at all times. Yeah, Whereas yeah. if you get a deck from, build, from a league kind of perspective, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I mean, for playing with your friends and and you know and people in, in a group, yeah, yeah, people are going to be drooling over some of your maybe your Dark Charizard because you've got yeah. it, but you can't physically use it. <laughs> Yeah, it it's just kind not. of makes it pointless. Now I've got all these Pokemon cards and I can't play with them. So what what yeah. do I do with them? Nothing. Like, sure. Yeah. That's what's so interesting between trading card games and like deck builders because trading card games like get that the business model pushes the next level. You always have to be moving forward. Mm. Whereas a deck builder, the way that the business model works is it kind of either thing. And then if you do, you do like okay, everyone can play this game. One person brings it, multiple people can play. And then you do the expansion. It's really interesting, but mm. just always gets me every time. But. Yeah. Well, you know, it, you, you mentioned that, but you've also got living card games as well. Which, yeah, and that's why I think Fantasy Flight did a really good job on that. Mm. Yeah. Um, but they're also very difficult because if you look at how many LCGs are actually alive and well, there's not many left. I mean, it does extend the, the life cycle. Like in general, in board games, the life cycles are actually very short, mm -hmm. right? So, like, it's it's pretty common that even Kickstarter, it does, you say it does really well. Like, say it does $100,000, you know, people like it, they're into it, it does pretty well. It sells, you know, two, 3,000 copies um, from backers. Like, that board game will likely be done selling in a matter of months. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not going to produce any more copies. That's it. Yeah, and so where unless you get unless you get the big hit like the wingspan or like the whole those just constantly selling like Catan like yeah. still making new Catans, yeah. but most games just play and then done. No. LCGs elongate that, but at some point it's just like we just can't do it anymore. Just too much. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I mean, you make a valid point. Um, so yeah, no, I, I think. Uh, you you've hit the nail on the head with it, and I and I actually agree. <laughs> I had a, a question for you guys, or yeah. all, all y'all. So, uh, do you consider do you consider a deck builder an engine builder? No, no, I don't. No, I don't either. I think that there's elements of the engine building as game to a deck builder, in that you have to the this principle is the same that as you build your deck it gets stronger in the same way that an engine builder does so i think they have this similar elements with a different concept that with a deck builder it's very much a card game whereas your engine builders take a lot of different formats so i think you could argue that a lot of your resource management games i'm thinking stone age specifically are also engine builders where it's about how you use your resources that, to the maximum effect can be deemed an engine builder. And I think there's a lot of crossover and very gray blurry lines between a lot of the genres. And it's knowing mm -hmm. how to manipulate them and make them work to yeah. your advantage. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a boggles my mind because this, this is my thought, right? An engine builder is what? Where you, you spend resources in order to build up an engine that allows you to do better to either generate more resources or victory points or whatever it may be. Right? That's that's what it is in a nutshell. Yeah. So what's a deck builder? You take your resources, you do them to buy things that will help you increase your victory points and the ability to buy more resources. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I see, I see an, your point. An engine builder is more fixed though. I yes. mean there's exceptions, but an engine once you've built your engine or you can continue building your engine, whereas deck builders, often there's ways of taking cards back off you, yeah. taking things back out in a way you that... Come back because you've got to play them again to, to redo it because they've gone to the star pile. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you there, can there, sort there, of cycle your deck. Yeah. yeah. So there's, 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 that, there's that randomness element, right? Because you got to put it into your deck and then you got to try and do it. But what's the number one, one of the number one rules of deck building? Slim your get deck. Rid of your star get, get it down. <laughs> get rid. Of, get rid of the trash. Yeah, Make it so it's as trash. close to a tableau Planet. builder as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just interesting to me because people are like like it's just we wrote an article about it. It's talking about like well where do games fit in? Like if so, you say this is an engine builder, what does that mean to everybody? Right. Mm. And so like a deck builder, what does that mean? And so a lot of people I think give deck building a bad rap, mm. but deck builders sell well still. And number two, 
It's just a different way of doing an engine build. You just use cars. Mm. No, you make a valid point. I hadn't thought of it like that. So, no, very valid point, Sam. Have you ever played uh, Dice Forge? Uh, no, I haven't actually. It's one I, I want to check out because you know oh. dice based game. That's like my number. That's like one of my number one games. I love that sport. But it's a dice builder, so you literally roll your dice and then you try and, and you upgrade the dice itself, and then you you roll them and continue to do stuff. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of ways, if you like deck building but you like dice, it's like dice sports. And so just interesting. So I just want to ask the question. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. We, this is what we like. This is what we're. We thrive on this kind of conversation and, and, and topics. So, you know, so it's a great question, Sam. So thank you very much for that. Um, so we're coming up to time, guys. We, we, we have actually hit our hour, which is incredible. <laughs> we never have a problem talking for an hour. <laughs> but I want to say thank you very much, Sam, uh, from BA Games Co. for joining us. Uh, it's been absolutely a pleasure having you on the show. Um, so anyone, uh, you can continue to go check out the Kickstarter. We've got a link at the bottom, but you can also find it direct through Kickstarter as well uh, and, and help him, you know, reach that, you know, extended, uh, extended uh, element of his Kickstarter for him. Bless him. Um, I, 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 did the, uh, I did the currency conversion. A standard, standard copy of the game through Kickstarter is about 26 quid. Not Which bad. isn't bad for a game at all, so it's it's awesome. So it's that's very good value for a game, I think. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and uh, congratulations for being fully funded, less than forty eight hours. Yes, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Yes, uh, <laughs> no, it's good. Um, but uh, let's help it keep that going. Um, um, so yeah, no, check that out. Um, also, a very quick update for also one min. Our uh, our guest from our last show, uh, his game Sifis Core. Is also running as well and doing very well itself. Um, mm. uh, he, it's a it's a it's a it's a business corporate game, uh, an actual board game, uh, and it looks good as well. Uh, so if you haven't already backed that and checked that out, check that out as well. Uh, but we we like we love one min, hi one min. So uh, you know we're wishing you luck, matey. Um, but no, it's just lastly to say thank you very much again. Uh, we love running this show. And if you love this show uh, and you want to help support our channel, because we are putting in uh, developments and improvements all the time, as you can see with our stream today. Um, so if you want to donate to the channel, please check out the link in the banner at the bottom. Um, it can either help support our channel or just buy us all a drink when lockdown <laughs> ends. We can all get together and play some games and have a bit of a drink. Oh, be lovely. Be nice. I know. I mean, if you, that, if you exactly. do want to buy us a drink, I'm a cheap date because I prefer I prefer soft drinks. There so. you go. There you go. So, <laughs> but no, if you want to donate it to the channel, do check that out. It's down there, and it will be on the website as well, so you can check that out. Again, the website is www.doalg.co.uk, and of course, you can use that all important hashtag doalg on Twitter. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, Sam. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, uh, thank you again, and uh, we'd definitely have you again on the show if you're ever doing another game or just want to have a chat. Oh, I get invited back? Yes! <laughs> yes, we like invites back, so uh, uh, yes. So, my, my brother is really sorry you couldn't be here, though. He really well, wanted to be here. Exactly, you know, and we, if we can get you both on the show another time, even if it's just a bit of a catch-up and a chinwag, we'd be more than happy to have you on the show. Um, so, uh, and maybe by then, maybe by then, Baby Allsop will be here, and you can all meet her. So uh, uh, she, I hope she is. She if she doesn't arrive naturally, <laughs> she's being you know, she'll be forcibly entered into the world Friday at eleven a.m. So keep your fingers one crossed. One way or another, she's coming. Yeah, <laughs> one way or another, she's coming. So uh, um, yeah, we're really excited. But no, thank you so much, everyone. Um, stay safe, take care, and we'll speak to you again next month. Take care.